COVID outbreak in Provincetown, Massachusetts last month created obviously a lot of fear. Most of the 469 cases in the resort town happened among the fully vaccinated. Important part is no one died and only five people were hospitalized, five out of 469. That's part of the reason that Andrew Sullivan argues it's time for a society to effectively accept COVID as part of our lives, not be paralyzed by fear. He writes, quote, those who live in denial, who have somehow convinced themselves that the virus is a hoax or a deep state plot or a function of white supremacy or whatever, will experience what everyone in denial eventually experiences, reality. And reality is the most tenacious influencer I know. Andrew Sullivan joins me tonight. He's also author of the new book, Out Just Now, Out on a Limb, Selected Writing, 1989 to 2021. So, Andrew, you wrote in your column on Substack, you wrote, quote, yes, I'll wear a mask indoors if I'm legally required or politely asked, but I don't really see why anyone should. In a free society, once everyone has access to a vaccine that overwhelmingly prevents serious sickness and death, there's no reason to enforce lockdowns again or mask mandates or social distancing any longer. In fact, there's every reason not to. There's certainly, though, millions of Americans who cannot be vaccinated, we're talking about, you know, immunocompromised or children under the age of 12, shouldn't a society like ours do what they can to protect those who are defenseless? Yes, we should. And I, I certainly think we should vaccinate each other and, and be vaccinated. But the uh, the risk is really very small to children. If, if you're 18 times more likely to drown if you're ages one to five than to die of COVID, I think putting it in some sort of perspective for children, which is it's not that serious a disease at all. It's like a bad cold. Um, the immunocompromised are going to be, unfortunately, vulnerable for a long time. This now, we now know, is a virus that transmits from vaccinated people. So we're going to have to live with this thing. We're going to have to be vaccinated consistently against it because it's not going away and it's going to be here. And the goal is not to pursue an illusory victory over the virus, but to learn how to live with it and actually live fully alongside it. For children, though, with pools, in the example you use, laws do require there be fences around all pools. They say how high they have to be. They look ugly. They're annoying for property owners who don't have children. And yet that is the law because society wants to protect children. There, we all want to protect children. And it would be interesting, I've, I've sort of thought of this, if, if this epidemic had really just mainly attacked children, if children were the ones dying, I think we would have locked down a very long time ago, don't you? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I think we would have locked down almost immediately. But that's, but that's, uh, but that's what I'm wondering though, if, sorry for interrupting, but, but uh, the, if there, you acknowledge in, in your, in your uh, piece that you know, the longer this goes on, the more the risk of other variants, even more, even worse than the Delta variant, there could be a variant that specifically does go after children. So, I mean, it, it is a possible future scenario. Yes, but we have two scenarios. We have one in which the epidemic actually does blow itself out, or at least blows, blows itself out with vaccination. And we have some sort of herd immunity, in which case we can begin to, begin to go forward. Or we're going to have to just live with the permanent constant vaccinations like we have for the flu. The trouble is with the viruses is that you can get fixated on them rather than the goal. The goal is living. You know, I've lived for 28 years with HIV uh, and it's in my bone marrow and I've learned not to defeat it. I can't declare victory, but I can get on with my life and make sure I don't die from it or get sick from it. I found that the most, one of the most compelling things about what you wrote is that, you know, not to lose sight of the goal, which is living your full life and getting on with your life, even though there are obstacles and learning to live with viruses. I, I, I certainly understand all that. Um, but in, in arguing against masks or any kind of mandates and social distancing, you write, by getting rid of these barriers to transmission, we can actually accelerate the end of the plague by allowing natural forces to take the helm. You also, at some point, write, the most potent, a potent incentive for vaccination is, to be brutally frank, a sharp rise in mortality rates. The more people who know someone who has suffered and died, the likelier they will see the logic of taking measures to avoid the same fate. In other words, if people recklessly refuse to face reality, call their bluff. You went on to say, let it rip. The, doesn't, though, the history of this, this pandemic in particular show that not to be the case? I mean, we have seen during the worst of this pandemic with you know, hospitals overwhelmed and people dying, still half the country is choosing not to be vaccinated. 
Yes, but we've also seen, and increasingly seeing right now, big jumps in vaccination rates That's in true. those states where people really are dying. Uh, certainly in Florida, that seems to be happening. Um, and in other southern states, that's happening. Big jumps in vaccinations. You know, government isn't there to hold your hand every day. The government has a responsibility to give you the means to protect you and your family from this. Once they've done that, it's a free country. You get to live. I, I agree that, I mean, this is largely here to stay and we have to figure out a way to, to live with it. And I, I'm clearly... I think if I had read your article before I had a kid, I, I would have been more in agreement with you. I will say yeah. uh, it has completely changed my mindset. So I was, when I read it, I was like, he's not even mentioning children, which uh, yes. of course, yes. So I apologize for that, but which no, is no, very no, annoying. My, my readers said the same thing yeah. and I understand. And I do think the position of a parent is unique and I can't know what that feels like. But, but and you, I'm not, I don't want to put myself in the place of any parent making that sort of call. But I do know that you need to use your brain and reason. You talk about the dangers of, the, of other variants de developing. I, the other thing I thought when I was reading it is that shouldn't you be, shouldn't we all be a little more humble about what we don't know? I mean, I feel like it, HIV AIDS for, you know, the first 10 years all throughout the 1980s, there was so much not known uh, about it. It's now very well known. You're very well aware of exactly, you know, th there was this incredible miracle of, of medicine that has come about and it, it's known what can, you know, make it just a chronic condition in people. We don't, there's a whole bunch of stuff about this virus we don't really know. I mean, the Delta variant cool. came we along don't. and surprised people. We thought, you know, the, the, the end was over, you know, that it already, you know, this was passed and it's not. And I, I just, the whole, I don't know, it just- look at, look at the death rate. And look at the death rates in the UK. Look at the death rates in Israel. They are coming down very fast. They haven't really gone up at all. In other words, this is becoming less of a plague and more of a disease that you live with. And also remember, there are costs of not living. There are costs of having a year of your life taken away from learning and developing as a child. Yeah. There are costs of not being with your family. There are costs of not being with your fellow workers. These are huge. We're a social animal. We can't live isolated like this. We've never done this before. But you can't wrap yourself up in cotton wool for the rest of your life. And you mustn't let children not live. Yeah, well, that's certainly true.